January 2023 is done. That's the first month of the year, in case you didn't know. Flew by. It did. And so we are going to be taking a look at our finances, our income and expenses for the month. We're going to have a beer. So check out this very first episode of 2023 of Beers and Budgeting. Hey guys, it's Justine with Debt Free Millennials, the channel to help you crush your debt and live payment free. And this is my lovely co host and husband, Kyle. Sure. <laughs> is, this, is this a thing we're going to be doing now? Hey, I didn't start it. Okay, yeah. Not technically, but <laughs> anywho, we are back for a brand new year, which means we need a brand new beer. Yep. Huh? So what are we drinking today? Well, we went and hung out with some new friends of ours at Firestone Brewery. Uh, it's local here in LA. So we picked up this beer, Camp Blanket. So it's not like the most exciting name, but it's a great beer. It's actually a collab beer with Radiant Beer Company. So it's two breweries that come together, make one beer, it's a limited release. So they'll make this beer once and then never make it again. But it's an Imperial Stout that has uh, cocoa and vanilla, like vanilla beans and cocoa in it. And so it is delicious. We loved it at the brewery so much, we bought one of their four packs. So that's what we're drinking today. Go Ooh. Firestone. If you had Firestone 805, great beer, you can find it. A lot on the West Coast, some of the Midwest. I don't yeah. know how far east it goes. I haven't been on the East Coast in a long time. Yeah, if you've yeah, had the good. 805, it's usually in a black label with white lettering. That's what they're typically known for. But, oh my gosh, Camp Blanket. Campfire Blanket? Camp Blanket. Camp Blanket. Mmm, so good. 9% alcohol, so be careful if you get this or you try to pick it up. Yeah, it's so good, though. I was so happy to see that they had a darker beer available. Yeah. They actually had quite a few dark beers at the brewery. True. Okay. Now that we have our beer in hand, shall we jump into January budget? Yeesh. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Creed. Okay. Let's take a look at our income table. You want it even more zoomed in than this. Okay. There. Kyle doesn't have his glasses on, so he has to... Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we forecasted that we would bring in $11,000. We actually brought in $11,967.20. So like spot on guess game there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. Our expenses were over. We actually spent $10,758.54. So we're still under budget. Man, $10,000. What did we spend $10,000 on? That seems like a lot. And that's why we do the budget. Yeah. Let's go over to the actual expenses here. And you're going to see a new column. And we had talked about this off camera about how I was categorizing things for the sinking funds because I was getting confused of what we were actually setting aside versus what we were actually spending and how much was remaining in those running total columns. So I did kind of some manipulation to our budget and we're gonna see if this works. And this will make sense once we get to some of the sinking funds. So let's take a look at what we actually spent in the fixed budgeted categories. Well, first off, 40% of that income went straight to rent. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so that was a obviously the biggest expense. The second biggest expense was daycare. At $2,455 for daycare. So right there, that's two thirds of the budget almost. Yeah, uh, actually pretty much half of it. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's half of it. Half. <laughs> yeah, so we were factoring in twenty-two hundred a month. This month was twenty-four fifty-five because there was a two hundred fifty dollars registration fee that I did not include in the planned column. So that was like, oh yeah, there was that registration fee. Anyway, it'll be twenty-two hundred for next month. We were actually under the groceries by ninety dollars say that again we were under our grocery budget wow that hasn't happened in a while is that because we actually just 
raised the plan so high that it was like, we have to come under this number. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's how you budget. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. It's still crazy that I have to budget $700 for groceries for two and a toddler. That just seems kind of unreal, but... We don't eat crazy. We haven't bought sirloin steaks in months. I mean, we eat ground turkey and mm -hmm. we're not buying, you know, organic flown in strawberries or anything like that. Yeah. So there you go. We'll see how February goes. February actually generally is a good month because there's fewer days in the month. So we'll see how that goes. Electricity and gas was a combined $132. I actually switched us to a level pay plan for gas to keep that a little bit more consistent for us. People in LA are just like going nuts over their gas bills. And people are, we're seeing it on the local news, we're seeing it on just whatever social media. People's bills out here are like tripling and quadrupling in price. Yeah. And that's just crazy. Is that just SoCal or is that like all over the country are people's bills going up? I don't know. I mean, we don't run our heat. So it's not like we have a huge expense, but people are posting like four or $500 a month gas bills for people in one bedroom apartments. Yeah, I was actually talking to one of my budget boot camp clients and we were trying to find creative ways to help them keep their utility usage low. The level pay plan is definitely something you should check out. It's not a discount. It's not a way to save money. It's just a way to keep your budget for utilities more predictable because they take an average of your actual usage and then you pay the average any overages gets put into a holding account and then either at the end of the year if you're a homeowner I'm pretty sure if you're a homeowner at the end of the year or if you rent and you go to like get off that pay plan or move then whatever is in that overage account you owe which we know happened to us when I did this in San Diego. It was actually like over $300 to close the account. So pros and cons to that, just heads up. I did it for gas, not for electricity. Let's also back up a little bit and just talk about like some of the obvious things. Okay, it's winter in most of the country. SoCal, yeah, we, we don't know what snow is, but we're from the Midwest. We know what snow looks like. We know how cold, single digits, negative wind chills, all that stuff goes. If you're walking around in your house in shorts and a t-shirt in January in the Midwest and you're cranking your heat, you're doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Put on a thick sweatshirt, put on thick sweatpants, get a stocking cap that you enjoy wearing around the house if you want to. Put on some slippers. It's amazing how much heat you lose through your feet being on cold surfaces. That, it'll make you cold, trust me. I used to keep my heat at 55 back in the day so I wouldn't have to pay any bills. Oh my God. Yeah, that's when I lived in my own one bedroom apartment. I would leave, turn that thing down to 55, go to sleep, turn that thing down to 55. Yeah, it ran twice a day. Once when I got home and once when I woke up. And I, my bill was only like 20 bucks a month. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but that was very poor grad student. But what did you do? You bundled up. You wore a robe like on top of your, your sweatpants and your sweatshirt and all that stuff. You can do things to stay warm. Yeah. Get a blanket on the couch. Sorry, that was a soapbox. That was some a people soap. Call. <laughs> Number one soapbox. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's just move on to fun, our fun money stuff, because mm. this is where that sinking fun extra column is really why I did this, okay? So any of these grayed out areas is basically a way for Kyle visually to know that we do not have a sinking fund set up for that particular category. So restaurants, shopping, and therapy, we don't have a sinking, a sinking fund for therapy. That, that would be interesting. So let's take a look at fund money slash LA bucket list. So one of our financial goals was to create an LA bucket list category inside of our budget so that we could spend on fun things to do around in the city while we're here. So I added that kind of as a fun money slash LA bucket list. I thought they kind of went hand in hand. So I added more money into this $300 for the month. So where this new column comes into play is we actually spent money. We spent $205 from the fun money LA bucket list category, but I actually set aside $300. Then the running total here is the money uh, that we saved, the $300, minus what we actually spent. 
and the $500 is carried over from last year. That's why we started with 500. And so then that difference is 594.67. That way now I can clearly see, hey, even though we didn't actually spend the money, we're earmarking this $300, we're putting it aside, and then we're here's what we're actually spending right here. So we went to some really cool places uh, last month. We went to the aquarium in Long Beach. Uh, we went to the LA Zoo, Griffith Observatory. Uh, Jet Lad? Yeah, we did some- Jeet Lad? Jeet Lad. Oh, it, a, a, it was a famous Thai restaurant in Hollywood that Which, Bobby Flay went to. Like you think Thai food, okay, I've had Pad Thai, you know, chicken Pad Thai, I've had Pad Sayu. You know, like, yeah, we got some pad say you and like you're like, yeah, but this stuff was good. Oh like, my gosh. I was like, Phenomenal. And yeah. you're like, curry, I've had curry. Yeah. You yeah. haven't had this. this. Is good stuff. Green curry. Yeah. So we want to find more places like that while we're in LA. Get that. At, we like ethnic food. Maybe that's not your thing, but you know, anything that isn't, you know, a burger and fries, we want to go try and have and all that stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I was about burger to say, I'm, fries, yeah. Pretty spot on. Yeah, but. we just like trying different cuisines and yeah. seeing, and especially LA is such a happening food culture scene that I feel like this is like take advantage of it while we're here. So that's how I started putting this together. Let me know in the comments if this makes more sense to you. If you're like, oh, okay, now I understand. If that's the case and I get a lot of comments saying, yeah, I like that, then I'm going to add that to the template to the toolkit. So that way everybody sees exactly how this is set up. You have 300 in the spent category, 300 in the like contribution or budgeted planned category, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the 205 of what we actually spent from this. Mm -hmm. So the way that I'm looking at this is that we actually spent $300 on fund money last month, like exactly $300 somehow. And then, so $95 was spent on something in fund money, but wasn't part of the sinking fund. 300 minus $205 yeah, is $95. 95. Yeah. So, so this category here should be, you know, should this be $205 and all $205 that we spent last month was from fund money or mm, no, from the, the sinking fund? No, because then, then we wouldn't have anything saved or rolled over for the next month. Yeah, okay. So this makes it look like from our actual budget that we actually spent the $300, even though we only spent 205. Right. So that remaining $95 still gets spent, but not really. Right. Like it gets rolled over. Kyle's catching up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catching up. Yeah. And so then here, like in Back this in this uh, category for my clothing. Can I hear the dump truck out? Yeah. Sorry, video. Besides the one you're sitting on. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> No? Okay, let's talk about th this <laughs> next category. I'm gonna tell you my, my process here. So the next little sinking fund category was my clothing budget and I said, oh, I'll put $75 in it for January. But I still have a $500 like sinking fund balance. And so I said, you know what? I I'll just keep it at $500. So I'm not gonna actually plan or earmark. I'm not actually going to earmark any money this month because I feel like I don't need it. I can put that money elsewhere. And actually, we didn't even plan anything for your clothing because I thought the same thing. Yeah. We're both sitting at $500. That's more than enough money. I'm pretty sure you bought the shirt that I'm wearing when we were still dating. Oh, wow. This shirt? Yeah. The yeah. Final. Yeah. Well, clothes are meant to last a long time. All right. Or I'm just really cheap. <laughs> well, we've already established that in previous episodes, so moving on. We actually did really great in our fun money categories. The only thing where I was like, hmm, don't know about this is our subscriptions. So uh, there's obviously money that was carried over from 2022. I just didn't have a good record of how much that was that carried over in order to cover our annual subscriptions because let's see, we paid for Netflix and Paramount Plus, which are monthly. Our annual for Disney Plus and Amazon Prime came out in January. So obviously we've been saving and setting aside that money every single month. I just didn't have the exact balance. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is just start in February tracking the $82 and putting that into the sinking fund running totals. Yeah. Um, and same thing with haircuts. We spent $100, um, both of us getting haircuts in January, but I didn't have a good running total amount from last year, so I just said $100, that's zeroed out. Now we'll start fresh for February. Good. Uh, let's go down to future and start- What happened to our down payment? Oh, well, I haven't filled in everything yet. Oh, thank God. I <laughs> thought you gave it all away. The only thing with the down payment um, and the home upgrades, now we're turning it into a home upgrades fund, is I still had Ally set for automatic contributions for $800 per month. And then I used to have $200 going into Vanguard, but I paused, actually canceled the Vanguard contribution since we knew we were getting closer to actually hopefully buying a home. And I forgot to put that $200 extra towards Ally to make it an even 1,000. So that's been fixed for February already. Okay, what do you got? I got Robin Hood. Robin Hood? $19,145. 76 cents. Great. All right, I want to go back to my down payment fund and we'll take a look at that. My Weeble, $1,826.14. Okay, we have $160,128.27 towards the down payment now. Sweet. Nice. Do we have a 2023 goal for our down payment or are we just like... We said 150 was gonna be the amount that we wanna put down, and then any extra on top of that, we would use for like home upgrades. All right. Are you still of that thought process? Well, yeah, I think I just wanna do the math, and I haven't done the math yet. What do you mean, done the math? All right, so we wanna put 20% down on a house so we don't have to play PMI, All right? So what can we afford? Right now it's like, 700,000. Yeah. So we want to do 20% of 700,000 and make sure that's 150 and then the rest of it is, you know, for the hot down payment fund. Now, math in my head, it, yeah, I think that that's, yeah, it should be right at, yeah, we should be fine. Okay. So 750 would be I mean, uh, 150,000 down payment. So I mean, we could totally change that amount and say we can we're going to put more money down to afford a a more expensive home and then we'd have less for home upgrades. Right. I mean, that's the debate that we're in is that do we want to get that house we see ourselves living in for 10, 20 years or do we want to see get a house that we see ourselves living in for 5 to 10 years or and living way below our means and just make it do with it. And I, we'll see what happens in the next few months. I feel like everyone's talking about a recession coming in the next year and I have no idea if it's gonna happen. Previously, they've always said that missed car payments are a good indicator of how the market's going because everything is kind of delayed, but car payments are usually fairly like timed and synced. I haven't looked at those yet, but I've heard that the rate of delinquent payments is going up on cars. Oh, so. wow. Okay. Another thing that I did, I guess I forgot to put this at end of the month. I opened up a Capital One 360 online savings account just to test it. It actually has the same interest as what Ally is currently offering, but I just wanted to see if that app and that dashboard was easier to use and just kind of give you some feedback on which one do I think is better, Ally or Capital One. So I moved all of our vacation fund into Capital One because it was with our primary bank and it was earning 0.01% interest. <laughs> so I was like, mm, I think we should take this $5,000 and actually put it into a high yield savings account to that is actually earning some interest. So there you go. We actually spent $22.40 out of the vacation fund because we used Kyle's points to book tickets back home oh, yeah. to Kansas City, but um, we just paid for that little 9-11 surcharge. On Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, so I used to love Southwest and then Christmas Oh, here happened. we go. Yeah, soapbox number two. <laughs> No, I I have over half a million Southwest points. I used to fly a lot. So it's time to burn those down and then say, see you later, Southwest. I don't know, maybe they'll recover and I'll become a fan again. But we originally got them because we had companion pass back in the day, which meant that whenever I flew somewhere, 
like if it was to a beach town for work or it was to DC for work or whatever, she got to go with me for $11. We had no kid and there was no COVID. It was amazing. It was so cool and so much fun and some neat places. I mean, we went to Hawaii for, my ticket was paid for by work and then she tagged along for $11 to go to Hawaii. We had some cool trips. Yeah. But that's why we originally did Southwest. Maybe then that, maybe we'll go back to that. I don't know. Right now I'm kind of mad at him. Like a lot of people. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, did you check your stash? Oh yeah, a long time ago. I'm waiting on you to catch up. To get you off of your soapbox. I've never had a soapbox. Okay. $984.09. Okay. All right, so we got all of our little investments and savings amounts updated, and I actually already had put in all of my IRAs uh, and those amounts put in. Where's Quinn? She actually moved uh. her up to the top since we are contributing to that. It is $6,570. Cool. Yes. So I also added to the notes section here. Uh, at the start of the month, I realized that we were being charged for a masterclass membership, even though we weren't using it. So I did request a refund on that, and we did see that go through our Chase credit card. So we got that back. Uh, towards the end of the month, I realized that we forgot that $250 registration fee for daycare. I was really excited to see that we did three awesome LA bucket list activities, including the Long Beach Aquarium, Griffith Observatory Planetarium, and the zoo. And I was really happy that we were under the grocery budget. Uh, the next month for February, I already mentioned increasing that down payment amount back to $1,000, but everything now going into Ally. And then creating some automatic transfers for vacation and the Treat Yourself Fund. But I had a question here, do we still want the Treat Yourself Fund or should that money really be part of the LA bucket list stuff? Bucket list it. Because there is money there. And it's bucket listed. Okay. Yeah, we could prize at a cheap carnival fair. Bucket list it. Yeah. So that said, we need to figure out this. I and think also, we should spend some of this extra money on getting a couple's massage. What? Yeah, we. It's been a stressful month. We need to get a massage. I mean, I'm not hating it. All right. So set like three hundred dollars aside. Like, let's go get a massage. Okay. I can book that. Yeah. What, the rest towards down payment fund? Yeah, just throw it in there. I mean, it's still liquid. We can pull it out if we feel like we need to, you know, go to Thailand or whatever. We're not doing that, but. <laughs> I was about to say, that would be awesome. Yeah. Let's take Quinn along. It'll be great. That part. Mm. Okay. So, I have a couple questions for you. Mm hmm Do you think anyone noticed that I shaved off my beard? No one commented in the last video when I had no beard. Oh, wow. Oh, no. It's so sad. It's because they're all looking at... You no, know, somebody did. Somebody did. did say that you had... They liked you with no beard. Oh. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, that makes one of you. <laughs> I, I can't not... I have to have something. It's weird. Yeah. Otherwise. Uh, number two. So last month we did dry January, damp January. More like drinking intentionally. So intentional we drinking. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I talk all about intentional spending. Yeah. We're like, intentional drinking. So it's like our friends invited us to go to Firestone. It's a great time to be like, this is when you should have a couple of beers to, to make memories with new great people. And then we weighed our, well, we also did no sugar during all that. And that was probably more difficult than the whole not having a beer damp January part. But I lost nine pounds last month from no sugar and less alcohol. You did. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. But what I want to ask you is, did we see it in the budget? Oh. I mean, no. We didn't buy any six packs. We didn't buy any four packs. Well, we, we did. We did. We, okay. We bought. Yeah. We bought that. We bought this. Uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I had to Instacart uh, one of our orders because Quinn and I got really sick. And I was like, I need diapers now. And that was probably an expense we could have avoided. So I feel like the 611 could have even been less than. But that really has nothing to do with sugar or alcohol. I don't know. I only asked that because I was, you know, doing the Instagram real thing, which is, you know, 
I always I do it to find comedy stuff rather than anything else. Oh. It, anyways, doesn't matter. Yeah. But there was a couple in there who said they quit drinking and they did it for a whole year and they calculated that it saved them ten thousand dollars. Whoa. Now I think these people were like going clubbing and doing bottle service in like the Las Vegas style. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of hangovers. Yeah. That's ten thousand dollars worth of pain. That's a lot of pain in more than one way. Ugh, no thanks. Yeah. So I was just curious after watching that, did we see it in the budget? And it seems like no, but I would say that we probably saw like a hundred, two hundred dollars in savings because we didn't do the happy hour thing, which is like usually a fifty to eighty dollar you know ticket, you know, with the appetizers or. Yeah, but keep in mind we it. still did damp January. We did have intentional drinking once a week. Yeah. We went to two different breweries yeah. for sure, and then there was another time we went to. San Diego. Yeah. So. Yep. So there you go. Okay. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Beers and Budgeting 2023. We're off to a good start already because we saved some money this month and we have some plans to continue to upgrade our down payment fund, home upgrades fund, and get a massage. I love that idea. Yeah, I need one. So see how we did that? We, we said priority is the big savings goal. We're going to take a little bit of that for the fun. So you can see that all of that focus is still on that big financial goal that we have, but we're also not afraid to spend on the things that bring us joy, which is relaxing and having an awesome massage together. Yeah. Cheers to that. We'll yeah. catch you next month for another episode.